On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to fix damaged sections of your wooden subfloor, whether it got caused by damage from water, growing mold on them, or just a hole underneath there. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Welcome back to my kitchen renovation series. And right when I removed all the old, old cabinets from my kitchen, I found this hole underneath there that was actually covered by flashing that I want to replace. And also some areas were damaged by water and growing mold on them. So if you want to find out where your joists are located, just look at where the seams are. In this case, there's a seam right there. And we can kind of figure out that the floor joists are running on this direction. The first thing I want to do is remove this vinyl plank flooring because this is going to get in my way because there's actually areas there that are damaged as well by water i'm going to be using my franklin stud finder right here to find out all the where the floor joists are located these are handy because you can use this on your wall and on your floor as well right when you find out where the joists are in this my case there are six they are located 16 inch centers i'm just going to mark it with my permanent marker or you can just mark them with masking tape it's totally up to you and what I'm going to find out is I'm going to find out how square I can cut this. Now you can actually find and cut from your, from joist to joist. But in this case, I'm only going to cut out the section that I need. And I'm going to build out support later on when I start replacing this section. I'm going to be using my square so that I can make sure that the section I'm cutting out is nice and even all throughout. Now you don't need to do this, but in my case, this will make it easier for you in the long run. I'm going to darken out where these lines are and measure twice so I know that everything is nice and even all throughout. So one amazing tool that I always like to use is this endoscope. This has a built-in camera and a light and you can connect it to your smartphone and you can find out anything so you don't cut blindly behind the wall or floor. I'll leave the link on the description down below if you're interested. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole on both sections of where the floor joists are so we can check what's underneath there before we start making a cut now this is a very safe method to do and i highly suggest you do this anytime you're cutting on the floor on the wall that you just don't know what's behind there you can actually see what's underneath there so when you start cutting either with your sawzall or your reciprocating saw or oscillating tool this is perfect because to prevent you from cutting into those pipes those PCV pipes or maybe some electrical that are running underneath there you want to check if those are underneath and you don't want to cut that because that's going to create a very expensive repair and will prolong your project so it's always great to have this in tool in your toolbox so that you can always check before you make many cuts on your floor or your wall so now I'm going to be setting my circular saw onto more than just a little bit about three a little bit over three quarters of depth um, you don't want to go too far deep, just enough to cut the floor. In this case, the thickness of this old floor, uh, subfloor that I have is three quarters inch thick. So I'm going to go a little bit over that just so I can make a final cut. Now, given you're not going to be able to cut really well on the edges, so you're going to be stopping about two inches from the end. This is where my um, oscillating tool will come in handy or you can either use your sawzall or your reciprocating saw to cut to the edge again be very very careful because there's an area here that we saw that there was piping that was located near the wall just be very careful and make sure that you use that endoscope to check everything i'm making a little notch right there to cut so i can have my pry bar can, i can have access to my pry bar to lift up this area and while i was doing this i found out that this subfloor wasn't ending at the wall it's actually connected all the way underneath to my bathroom so in this case we have no choice but to cut along the perimeter i'm using my um, oscillating tool again if you have a sawzall or a reciprocating saw that will be a nice handy tool as well but this is what i have in mind i couldn't actually find my um, reciprocating saw so i just had to stick with this one and it worked just really well anyways okay so now we can pry off this old subfloor now come to my surprise when i opened this thing there was a bunch of piping underneath there so good thing that we used that endoscope to check everything and we were able to not cut along those pipes okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to measure out for the support base so we are going to i'm what i'm doing is just measuring out what i have only leftovers are two by fours 
I don't have any 2x6s, but this should be enough to construct the framing for the floor so that we can add support onto before we place that new plywood over for this new sub flooring. Okay, so I'm just making my cuts here, measuring as we go. Make you know my measurements will be definitely be different from what you have. So I'm just making all the necessary cuts. And we're going to take all these pieces and build it onto the job site. It's totally up to you where you want to build them. But here you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm constructing the framing for the floors for the new new flooring to have it a nice base to sit on. And I'm just attaching the old floor um, onto the new base that we're constructing. Make sure everything is nice and square. Use your square. And I'm going to be taking this little 2x4 piece. And I'm going to use it kind of like when you're doing drywall patch repair. It's just kind of like the same thing. I'm going to be using this so that I can have a nice base to put the new sub flooring on. And I'm just anchoring everything with my general purpose screws. These are two and a half inch general purpose screws. And this is what the framing looks like underneath there. So we have a nice stable foundation for the new um, sub floor. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. Now we're going to go and make the new new piece measure out for what um, piece that we need and make sure that you make it a little bit smaller than your actual measurement. So you, you know, so you can have room for expansion and contraction. Again, this is the new small two by four feet piece that I have that I bought from Lowe's. This thing was so expensive. It was running around $40 just for this small piece. So make sure you make this nice and precisioned and make sure that you cut real you know measure twice cut once i'm just going to be using these two by fours as my base so that when i use my reciprocating saw my actually my saw horses are actually are being used at the moment so i'm just going to be using this technique right here and yes i am wearing flip-flops i love working with flip-flops when i'm working around the house it's comfortable um, instead of wearing shoes all the way around there but anyways make the cut and now you have your final piece this is the most easiest part now for you know added tip make sure that you mark out where these areas are where your screws are going to go through okay it's very you know so you don't mess mess um so you don't miss any areas to screw on right when you put that on just place the new piece down and look at that it fits like a glove make sure you test it and you see how nice and stable that is now since this is going to be on the back of my oven and the and a kitchen cabinets are going to be sitting here not much traffic is going to go through here not much weight this is what it looks like before you see where the water damage are a little bit of mold growing and there was a little hole right there that's covered with the flashing and yeah this port three quarter inch thick here's what the new subfloor replacement looks like brand new plywood three quarter inch thick let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this. It was easy and if you found value to this, please hit that big thumbs up. Press the subscribe and notification bell and I'll see you friends in the continuation of my kitchen renovation series.